Hello and welcome to This Week in Campbell Football coming to you from the President's Suite in the brand new Carly C's IGA Press Tower here at Barker Lane Stadium. I'm your host Chris Samire, joined as always by the head coach of Campbell Football, Mike Minter, and we are powered, this show powered by Fred Anderson Toyota. Coach, uh, your team losing a heartbreaker on the road to Valparaiso in overtime over the weekend. A lot of good things you can pull for this game, including your offense, 591 total yards. They scored 42 points. They were looking good on Saturday. You know what? The offense came to play. Um, you know, again, I guess the game is, is beyond just yards and, and points sometimes. And, and um, I thought the offense gave us an opportunity to win. And, and um, that's what you want from your guys is an opportunity. And, and they gave us that. And, and um, you know, defensively, um, we, we didn't make the plays we needed to make um, to win that football game. What do you tell your team, not only in the locker room, but then uh, when you got them back here for practice on Sunday, what do you tell them after a loss like that? Well, you know, what I try to do is pull out the positive things of a football game. And, and what I told them is, I said, look, you turned the ball over six times. Uh, you had over 100 yards of penalties. And you gave up six big plays, which led to their 42 points that they had in the game. Now, if you, if you eliminate some of that, um, we win the ball game handily. So what I told them is if a team turn the ball over six times and have 100 yards of penalties and give up that many big plays, they should get blown out. And you didn't. You went in overtime. So that shows you where you at and where they at. And, and um, you gave them the game. And so, um, guys, it, it's not that we're not good enough. Um, it's not that we're not doing the right things. Right now is believing that you can, you're good enough and believing that you can make that play. Coach, uh, we talk about the yards and rushing again. You guys entered the game in the top ten uh, in the country in rushing as a team, and you upped your average, and you have really have found a stable of backs back there. You know, freshman Keith Goss, uh, Deshaun Jones, also a freshman, and then senior Kurt Odom all toted the ball for some good yards on Saturday. Well, you know, that, that was one of the things that I wanted to do um, you know, coming in as a head coach was run the football and stop the run. And, um, you know, they had 86 yards. We have almost 300 yards of rushing. Um, that right there is a formula that I like, okay? So now it's about the mistakes and taking away the mistakes that, that kills all those type things. And so, um, you know, right now we, we're looking at our um, offense and we're saying, okay, we can run the football. It don't matter who it is. I mean, we proved that um, in the four weeks that, that we didn't play. And so we got to continue to do that, continue to build on that. And what I'm excited about is the fact that we almost had 300 yards passing, uh, which that makes your offense even more explosive now that you can run the football and they got to get eight guys in the box, nine guys, guys in the box, and now you hit them over the top. And we was able to convert on those um, long passes, which is huge for us. 42 points put up by the uh, Campbell offense uh, over the weekend. Here's the highlights from Valparaiso. Campbell at Valparaiso down 7-zip in the first quarter. Then Aaron Nichols intercepts this Eric Hoffman pass. He'll take it 43 yards the other way. The pick sets up this Jarrett Ozimek 23-yard field goal. He would add a 20-yarder in the second half. Ozimek 4-for-4 four four on field goals this season. Still in the first quarter, CU down 14-5 to five until Kurt Odom takes it in from 19 yards, and the comeback begins. Next drive, freshman Keith Goss bounces to the outside, then turns it upfield for 43 of his 66 yards. CU would run for 298 yards on the day. That run sets up Campbell QB, Brian Hudson, here rolling to his left, the 38-yard TD toss to Ben Bowling. CU takes the lead, and they would add to it before the half. Hudson here takes it himself on the option. CU scores three unanswered TDs. They lead 25-21 to at the half. Now in the fourth quarter, game tied at 28. A trick play works to perfection. The handoff to Goss. The flip to wide receiver Jordan Hildreth and the former QB hits Chad McMichael wide open for the touchdown. 
again in the fourth quarter. Campbell now down seven, under three minutes to go. Third down, a heave to Hildreth, who makes the fantastic catch. That would set up this Kurt Odom 14-yard TD, his second of the day. It ties the game with 242 left, sends it into overtime, but Campbell comes up short in OT, falling 49-42. to Coach, you are in the middle of uh, Pioneer Football League play right now. You get to come back home uh, for the home uh, conference opener as Moorhead State comes into town 1 o'clock this Saturday. What do you know about the Eagles? Well, you know what? This, this football team is better than their record um, shows, and um, I think they kind of um, got it going last week. Um, they put up uh, 45 points and and um, really had a great showing uh, offensively and defensively. I think their defense is is um, a pretty solid defense. They got guys that fly around. They kind of uh, you know they're athletic and and, and, and they're big. And so um, our offense is going to have their um, work cut out for them um, come this week. And and then um, on the um, defensive side of the ball. Um, we again, it's it's about us. It's, it's not even really about them, and it's it's about not giving up big plays. What do you do as a coaching staff to do that? You know, giving up the big play. Is there things specifically you can do to to get your guys ready? Well, you know what, you put them in those situations in practice, and um, and and you give them opportunity after opportunity to play the deep ball, and um, as as a defensive back. The other thing is is that. A great defensive backfield is because also you got to rush. So, so we got to get more pressure on the quarterback um, from our defensive line and, and, and maybe come with some different blitzes to try to um, throw guys off. And so um, it kind of work, works hand in hand. And, and if we get pressure on the quarterback, he can't throw the ball as well, which then give our guys a chance and opportunity. So, um, you know, we're going to put them in positions and we're going to preach it all week of staying on top keeping everybody in front, and you'll be okay. You've answered all the tough questions on this show, Coach. Uh, now we got the fun ones. It's time for our favorite segment, the uh, Ask Coach Mike. You can post uh, your questions to Twitter, hashtag Ask Coach Mike, or put them on Facebook. Okay, this comes from Jen coming to you from Cary, North Carolina. She says, okay, Coach, you're from Oklahoma. That's a long way away from here. We know your favorite NFL team now is the Carolina Panthers, but – what football teams, both college and NFL, did uh, you grow up following back in Oklahoma? Well, um, as, a, as a young guy, I, I watched the Dallas Cowboys and, um, you know, loved the, the, the Cowboys um, when I was growing up and Tom Landry and, and um, of course, Tony Dorsett, Drew Pearson and, and Danny White, Roger Starback, all them guys that, that I um, grew up watching and, and wanted to emulate. And... Um, and, and so as a, as a college football team, um, in the third grade, I, I watched Nebraska, and, and I fell in love with them. And, and from that point on, I was a Nebraska fan. And so I guess I'm a little odd man out uh, when you talk about being from Oklahoma and loving Nebraska. And, um, but it was something about, you know, Tom Osborne and that offense that I loved. Now, folks, uh, I grew up in the Midwest uh, just like a Coach did. And Oklahoma and Nebraska was the rivalry in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So that's kind of like, uh, I don't know, if you're, a, if you're a UNC fan in the middle of Chapel Hill and you're waving your Duke flag. But um, on top of that, I know from your high school days as well, I should probably ask you what basketball teams did you follow because tell us about your basketball career in high school. It was, uh, it was pretty big as well. Yeah, you know, I, I, I loved the game of basketball. It kind of gave me something to do after football was over. And, and, um, you know, I was just, you know what, I, I was just a competitor, and, and, and I was just going to compete, and, 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 and um, I was more of a scorer than a shooter. And um, so I averaged about 21 points a game and, and um, about five assists. And so, you know, that, that was just something that I just loved doing and competing. And, and um, we went all the way to the state um, tournament, um, you know, my senior year. And so it was fun. So as far as basketball, I was a Lakers guy. And, um, you know, Magic Johnson and Kareem and, and Worthy and, you know, Showtime, that, 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 was, that was my basketball team right there. The Lakers in Dallas. Uh, <laughs> you, you grew up celebrating some championships, didn't you? It's all about the championships. <laughs> well, uh, the road to the PFL championship continues. Uh, the home opener for the league coming up this Saturday, folks, so 1 o'clock against Moorhead State. Go to GoCampbells.com for tickets and more information. That'll do it for this episode of This Week in Campbell Football. For head coach Mike Minter, I'm Chris Amire saying if we don't see you at the game this Saturday, we'll see you next week right here on This Week in Campbell Football.